Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Jason Reinders, the voice of That's What I Do Bowling, here with you at Bogarts Entertainment Center, formerly known as Apple Place, in Apple Valley, Minnesota, as we start our step ladder finals here at the That's What I Do Singles event. And that is our number five seed, the lowest of our silver qualifiers. Mr. Chris Wilson. Chris Wilson qualified fifth out of semifinals with games of 222 and 166 to go for plus 34. His opponent, whom you will see in just a moment, is the low end of the bronze qualifiers as Chris chops off the 3-6-10, leaving the three for a nine count in the first frame. This gentleman is Jethro Davis. As I said, he is a bronze division bowler. He shot games of 193 and 191, so he's consistent, and came in at plus 32. And he opens his account in the step ladder with a big strike. The all-important question that everybody really wants to know is what is the handicap difference between these two bowlers? And I'm here to tell you there isn't one. Well, there is one. It is one. Chris gets 23 on the 191 average, so he is just barely in the silver division. Jethro is the highest that you can get in the bronze division at a 190, and he opens up with a double. Jethro opens, uh, has a 190 average, meaning he gets 24 pins. So, literally, there is a one pin difference in handicap between these two bowlers, and that's it. So, what you see on the board is essentially what you're going to see in the final score. Chris goes a little bit face up and leaves another 3 6 10. You replay about a minute and you'll see what he did in the first frame on lane 9, and that was take out the 6 10. Let's see if he can manage the, to get the 3 out this time. Again, we are at Bogart's Entertainment Center here in Apple Valley. And he does get the three out that time for his first mark, a spare, here in the second frame. As I said, we're at Bogarts Entertainment Center. You might better know it as Apple Place. We are recording and will eventually be up on YouTube. Uh, Joe says he's going to go into the gold. Joe, I hate to break it for you. Uh, we're not going to have gold anymore. Am I right? Yeah, no, no, no. Oh, and he stuffs the 10 pin. I got Mike right beside me. That's what I was talking about. Pretty sure he confirmed we're not going to have the gold division. Uh, so I'm trying to think. Last singles, there was only four or five people that bowled gold, which was second shift of all singles divisions this trimester. And... He's able to get that to hang on, and he now has back-to-back -back spares in the second and third. And if I was told correctly in the second shift, we only had three people that wanted to bowl gold. So, yeah, the gold division is as good as dead right now. I'll be the first one, black guy, kill something. Mike making his uh, generally amusing comment there. And Jethro stays hot with a turkey, and he'll move back to lane 9. He now has a big old lead at 21 in the first frame. He can go ahead and make it 32 with a strike here. Today's pattern was... Abby Road and Jethro's got four. He's got the first four. Today's pattern was Abby Road. And I'm gonna go ahead and look that up right now because I want to tell you the specs correctly. 
I was told that this was a modified Abbey Road, but to my memory, it played just like Abbey Road. Chris, I gotta leave the other, leaves another form of the fence. This is the one, two, four, eight. Abbey Road, 40 feet at a one to 3.7 ratio, so it's medium short and it's pretty heavy. And Chris doesn't even get to the head pin. He's got two opens of four frames. He's got 50 through four. That's probably not gonna win it. Uh, I, I wouldn't quite go as a house shot, Joe. It's, uh, it's a pretty heavy house shot, but sure. 24 milliliters of oil at a one to 3.7 ratio. That's a pretty heavy house shot. Chris up for the fifth frame. Gets that one out, that'll stay in the pocket. A little bit light and can't get the two pin to fall forward. Tried to trip it out and it didn't go, so he's left with just the two pin. Winner here will take on our second place uh, bronze qualifier, Pat Jensen. Winner there takes on the number one bronze division as Chris is able to pick up the two pin as you would expect. Winner of the uh, match against Pat Jensen moves on to take on our top bronze qualifier, Jesse Perez. After that, we get our final two silver qualifiers, Donathan Brown in second place and Jamie Clark in first. Jethro for the fifth. It's a little heavy on the face. That's the baby split, the 310. A lot of different ways to pick this up. You can hook at it and let the ball do the work in between, or you can do as many coaches and the pros suggest and shoot straight at it as if you're shooting a 10 pin and you'll use your ball. It kind of looks like that's what he's going to aim for. Let's see what he actually does. Oh, he's going to hook at it. And he's got it. He stays clean through fifth with that baby split conversion. And Joe, you also hold the second shift. Almost anything after four games starts to play a little bit like a house shot. Ooh. Ooh, wow. Jethro in the sixth. That's a good ball. And that's a really good ball. That's another strike. And he has checked himself out of this match. Chris is going to need to go off the sheet and get some help if he wants to get into this match. Reminder, there's only one pin difference between these two. Chris, outside, and the, ooh, had the split for a second, had the 210, and it trips out the two later. And he will convert that 10 pin. So he's still kind of in the game. He's, uh, what, 60, so 50. He's 59 pins down right now in the fifth for the spare working when Jethro has a strike. So Chris is going to need to do some work and get quite a bit of help to stay in it. Otherwise, this one is almost over. And there's his first strike of the match. So he's not out of it quite yet. Just a reminder, we run events every two weeks. Yes, I know, March has been busy. This is our third event in three weeks. But we go back to every other week now, for the most part. Next event is at Memory Lanes. Actually, our next two events are at Memory Lanes. Two weeks, April 7th, will be our one of our doubles tournaments. If you don't have a partner, go ahead and show up. We'll do our best to get you paired up with somebody else looking for a partner. Jethro in the seventh. Another good ball. And it's another strike. He's got another double. 
Let's see what Chris can do. Chris can still go for 209. Yeah, Chris can still go for 209. And, uh, well, Jethro needs to keep it on the lane. There you go. Next event, doubles event, memory lanes. 10 and noon, two shifts. 40 bucks a shift. You cannot bowl with the same partner twice. After that's the trios. It'll be the weekend of the 13th and the 14th. Four shifts for that one, two each day. That one goes to the face. That's the 3 6 10 for Jethro. So if you're interested in uh, joining up, give us a like. You know, tap like on the page. That's what I do. Shoot us a message. You know, we'll, we'll get you up and get signed up and then show up to the next event. And we'll get you here. We'll get you bowling. Jethro picks it up and he's got 175 so he's 185 he really without a strike here from Chris this match is over Jethro's already in the 190s Good shot. Gets a little bit Brooklyn, which you don't see from Chris too often, but he leaves another 10 pin. And that will just about do it here. As Jethro Davis will move on, barring a mega miracle. He's not going to miss it. He missed the 10 pin. That'll do it right there, folks. A 117, he can only get to 177. Jethro's already got that beat. So your winner in this first match is Jethro Davis. He will move on to take on Pat Jensen in the second match. We will stay here to let these gentlemen finish. And um, Chris finds the gray board. You know what they say, it doesn't matter if you've got the Crux Prime or a plastic ball, ain't not a ball on the market that's coming back from that gray ball. And Memo was saying the ball can't hook in the gray. Yeah, yeah, that's a good saying too. The ball cannot hook in the gray, that's for sure. Baby split, but that's his second ball, and we're through the ninth frame. He now has 125. Bad time to have a bad game for Chris. He will fall just one seed. He will finish sixth in today's event. So, uh, the people that did not make it, uh, Silver Bowlers was J.J. Reef, Josh Peterson, uh, Nick Gold, Michelle Taylor, and Tony Madeline, and the only Bronze Division Bowler that did not make it was Brian Remick. So on top of our regular six, there you have the six that rounded it out. We took three and two from each division today. In each shift, three silver, two bronze. And he gets through the face and leaves the six ten. Jethro in the 10th, leaves a bad washout. 3, 4, 6, 7, 10. And Chris throws a backup two handed ball to pick up the 6, 10. Marginally not legal because he threw it two handed, but he, he, he picked it up, but it's not for the match, so nobody's actually going to care. Jethro. Chops off the 6'10", and that will end his game at a very, very good 219. And here's Chris, moving to a two-hander, and he trips out the 6'10", he will finish with 145. So your winner here, and moving on to take on the 4 seed Pat Jensen, is Jethro Davis. We will be right back with that match 
in just a minute. Stay tuned, folks. Thank you.